और वी ऑल गुड प्रीति या थैंक यू सो लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस माय सेल्फ आई एम प्रीति हियर आई हैव ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टीन इयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन टू आई एंड हैव गुड एक्सपीरियंस ऑन डेवॉम्स करेंटली आई एम वर्किंग एज अ डेवॉम्स लीड फॉर एन एम एंड आई हैव गॉट गुड एक्सपर्टाइज ऑन वेरियस डेवॉप्स टूल्स एंड आई वर्क ऑन सेवरल प्रोजेक्ट वेर आई हैव सीन एंड टू एंड वर्क क्लो द सी आई सी डी क्लोज एंड आई हैव गुड एक्सपीरियंस ऑन द बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस स्ट्रेटजीज हाउ टू हैंडल एनी इंटरव्यू हाउ टू clear your interviews or how to work in the projects uh, right like i can help you uh, with all these things i have also good online training experience on uh, devops so i'm here with you and i'll be taking up this complete course for two months the duration you know like it is for two months uh, so here end to end will be covered uh, let me also talk about the uh, course and the major agenda of this training right the main agenda of this training is here everything will be taught from basics till advanced concepts right it's not that only basics are covered or advanced topics are covered or only freshers can take up this or only it is for uh, um, uh, senior people who are working i have people from different environments it's a heterogeneous batch from different backgrounds different work environments different experience levels so i have designed this in such a way that this course will be beneficial for everyone in the sense you might be a fresher you might be coming from a development background you might be coming from an ops background you might be coming from a science background totally different background this course will help you okay the main thing kept in mind is it is taught like another new subject that's all you don't have dependencies on your previous role or your previous project or your uh previous experience kind of or your education experience okay it is designed as a separate subject where everyone can get benefit from right meaning a developer join this let's say we have even project managers who want to understand the complete flow as they have to lead the projects we have freshers they have want to make a career into devops they want to learn the tools yes we have freshers as well we have people like i already mentioned we have people from math background science background right so irrespective of the background any one can take up this course and uh, the benefit out of it right like like i said every topic will be taken from basics till advanced irrespective of whether you already know it or you are new to it so that everyone can gain from this course Uh, so uh, that's one thing and the next thing is once you are done with this course right it, uh, done with the course in the sense it's not just you just attend and just go on it you i need your dedication your effort your time during these two months right so uh, when i say you are done with this course means you have done complete hands on you have done you have mastered it okay you have to do complete hands on okay you have to put your time and effort do the hands on and once you learn this course completely you will be able to work on any devops projects independently individually and with more confidence and also you can clear your interviews that is the main agenda right so how is the, how does this happen this happen means you can clear your interviews when you have good grip on the topic any topic be it any topic let's say first i'll be talking uh, taking up git so git when you take up i'll be teaching from the basics including the architecture till the end okay also i would like to mention here devops there are hundreds of tools in each category when i say version control system see what is version control system everything i'll teach you just i'm explaining let's suppose you talk about version controlling there were so many tools under version controlling like git svn tfs perforce clear case and so on here i'll be teaching you the one which is very widely used in such a way that you can work on any other tools very well confidently independently that's the agenda also companies are looking for the same they are not expecting that you should know all the tools in the same category right if you know one tool in a category yes you can work on up work upon others that is kept in mind uh, while teaching so that you can clear any interviews okay because you i am teaching everything from basics with architecture and what is happening at the back and in and around Uh, Priti, uh, sorry to disturb. So, when you are saying about the topic now, can you just give a presentation, like, or you have any other uh, uh, PPT? Because you said Git, what are the tools available, and version control, what are? 
Of course, you might be saying later on, but if you give it uh, right now, it will be quite effective. I feel like. Definitely, I have a PPT and I'll be walking you through all those tool stack. Okay, here I'm just giving you a few liners about what is this course all about. I did not start the topic yet. Okay, just giving you a few liners as an example I mentioned. Definitely, I have a PPT. I'll share it with you in a couple of minutes. Okay, the, main, uh, the point of mentioning here is everything will be taught from basics in and around of every topic, every tool so that you can clear your interviews. You can work on your projects independently. If anyone want to uh, make a switch of your, your career, like you from development to DevOps or else from testing background to DevOps or else you are an ops person, you want to become a DevOps. This suit, How much is the fees, Preeti? You can contact with uh, Mr. Raj regarding the fee and all, or you can uh, directly message or uh, WhatsApp. Okay. So uh, this is about the course. I'm just giving you a gist of the course so that this will help you. And also the URL for our website is shared in the Zoom chat. Okay. You can also walk through it. Right. That's a few liners I want to mention about the course. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, today, it is an overview or the demo. Like, it's, it's a demo is nothing but it's my first class. First class is like intro to overall course. You will get a high level picture of what is DevOps, why DevOps, why do I learn it, where will this talk, course suits me, isn't it? It answers these questions. These general questions will be answered um, by the session today, right? By the end of the topic today, you will get clarity on these things, whether this course suits me or not whether I can make a switch over DevOps or not, whether this course gives me confidence or not, all these questions will be answered. You will get a clarity on it. That's what is a demo and intro. Okay, from tomorrow onwards, hands-on begins. Today, it would be a theoretical part of getting clarity on all these things, a high-level picture of DevOps. So without any more delay, let's begin. I'm sharing a black screen. Can you all see the black screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for the quick response. So let's begin. Uh, like I said, we'll be moving from the basics. Uh, you might be working on DevOps already. You might be having some idea, but let's revise everything from the basics and start fresh. Okay, so I'm talking about what is DevOps, right? You should know what is DevOps when you want to learn it. You need to have a better clarity on it. So when you say DevOps, definitely we can get the terms like dev team and ops teams right this these are the two teams okay what are these two yeah see uh, when you talk about any application you are using let's take uh, amazon.com an online shopping application whenever any application if you take up there are so many teams involved at the back end so that you are using it today correct at the back end so many teams work for it and today i'm going to talk about three main teams development team operations team and let's say testing team as well. T testing means QA, quality assurance team. Okay, let's talk about these three major teams who work for the application. And uh, uh, let me remind you, there were so many teams, so many people, so much of hard work happens at the back end. Today, we will be concentrating on these three teams. Okay, right. So now when you take when you talk about development team, yes, they are called developers or programmers who write the program, who develop the application, right? So they might be using some programming language and they write that they develop the code and they write the, I mean, they uh, build the application. So once the application is ready, it would be tested by QA team, right? Again, there are different levels of testing, types of testing. We are not getting into it, but let me tell you, yes, they will test the application if it is as per or if it is meeting the expectations. Uh, if there are no bugs, then it will be proceed for deployment. Deployment means Ops teams would uh, deploy this, that means run this application so that end users can use it. Of course, there are again different levels. Like first, it will be deployed into lower level than higher level and so on. But I'm just giving you a high level like developers will develop the application, testers will test this, ops teams will deploy it, right? And also, I believe, you know, uh, developers or programmers work for development, testers, right? They are called QA professionals right? Testers, automation test engineers, and it could be manual testing or automation testing. Again, coming to ops teams, who are the people involved here? They, you may be calling them admins or network technicians, DBA, all of them comes under ops, right? And they'll be taking care of access, logins, 
right? Uh, network connectivity, they'll be taking care of all of these things, right? These are the three major teams and these are the tasks they perform on a high level. Now, when you talk about ops, yes, these are the things they perform. In short, they can say, we can say infra is managed by this ops teams. And now, yeah, developers wrote the code, they developed the application, testers have tested it, let's suppose, right? And let's say during this process of development and testing, they may need some new changes to the infra or else let's say they may need some new operating system, correct? Or else uh, they may need some new service or else the service should be started or else whatever their new package might be installed. So basically, whenever they are performing these tasks, they may need some changes to the infra, right? So whenever they need some changes to the infra, they are not supposed to do or they will not do on their own. They would request the ops teams, right, for any infrastructure changes and ops teams should serve these requests, right? Okay, before ops teams serve the request, these ops teams would be doing a lot of checks. A lot of checks like whether this application means if this new service is started, whether the infrastructure is going to be stable or is this going to be affected something else and is it going to bring any network, will it cause any network disconnection or else will it cause any server uh, uh, down or else will it cause any access disturb. So they will do a lot of checks and even though they do a lot of check, if something goes wrong, it's their responsibility to keep the infra <clears throat> stable and running, right? All of these checks obviously take some time. Meanwhile, developers are waiting for the changes they need, correct? So obviously this takes a lot of time. And ops, team, ops teams always look for stability in the infrastructure because what may happen, servers should be stable, services should be running, right? Networks should be connected. All of these stability ops teams will be looking for and dev and QA team will look for agility, means they need some changes to perform their tasks, right? So yeah, development team is waiting for the change, ops team is still taking some time. Here, when I say development, I'm including QA also. Okay, I'm clubbing this QA with the development. So I'm just calling in short, this uh, both these teams combined as dev team. So dev team will be requested, I mean, still waiting for the change. And here dev team think that, Ops team is taking too much time to serve the request. And what Ops team think? Ops team think that this dev team is uh, requesting for changes always, which they are not sure of, isn't it? Because dev team doesn't know why Ops team is taking so much time. Similarly, Ops team doesn't know why developers need all these changes because there is no proper communication, no proper collaboration, no proper understanding between them. Why there is no proper collaboration? Why can't they collaborate or communicate better? Because this dev team has got a different skill set from ops team. Means their areas of expertise or their core competencies are different. Right? Because see, uh, uh, development team, they have an idea on programming languages, they'll have idea on build tools, they will have knowledge on database and so on. Whereas ops teams will have knowledge on deployments, the operation stars, the networks and so on. Their core competencies, their areas of expertise are different and each one may not be understanding the challenges of others. Hence, there arises some gap between the teams and there is no proper understanding, proper collaboration between, the, between these teams. So how to overcome this gap? Any other solution, how to overcome this gap so that they can understand each other. See, understanding other teams doesn't mean that an ops team should go and write the code. Okay, no. Or understanding meaning they should know the process, their requirements better so that there will not be any uh, blame game for them. Right? So that teams will not blame one another when an issue comes in. Right? So how to eliminate the gap between the teams? Any solution? Yes. See, here I'm talking about why DevOps came in. Okay, when you are learning something, first you should have answer for this. What is DevOps? Why, uh, sorry, why DevOps came in, right? And then, yeah, what is DevOps? And then, how to implement it? These are the three questions will be answered throughout the course. Today, we'll be answering first two questions like why DevOps came in, what is DevOps? 
from tomorrow onwards, we'll be getting started by implementing it. Anyway, yeah, first let's talk about this. How to eliminate this gap? That's where DevOps came in. Yes, DevOps came in to eliminate this gap between the teams. How I'll tell you. Okay, first, yes, to eliminate the gap. Again, you may be asking, is that the only reason DevOps came in? Just to eliminate the gap. That's it. There are many other reasons. The second reason is, uh, okay, before I go for the second reason, are we all good? Good to go? Uh, yeah, pretty. Right. So, yeah, let's talk about the second uh, second reason why DevOps came in. Let's talk about a traditional approach without DevOps. Developers are writing the code. Okay, they develop the code and testers are testing it. Okay, this process keep on continuing. Developers develop the code, testers test it. Whenever they find the bug, they'll again send to developers. This process keep on continuing till the application is defect-free, bug-free, correct? So once the application is bug-free, this application will be handed over to the ops teams, operations team. I'm talking about without DevOps. This is what is happening without DevOps. So they hand over this application to operations team and now operations team have to deploy it. So to deploy it, operations have to build the infra, meaning first they should check which operating system, which servers they should install. Okay, fine. Let's suppose they have installed some Linux systems. And let's say this is some Java application. So they need to find out which version of Java that should be installed, correct? Again, the application may have some compatibilities like, okay, uh, this works with some Tomcat 9, some particular version of Tomcat, this works with some particular version, so and so. So they should know what are all the softwares that should be installed to run this Java application. They should also know the right versions of them. Am I correct? So operations team will get all of that information documented from development team because it is their application. They know which version of Java they should put, which version of other software should be there for this application to run. Correct? So development team, what they'll do, they will hand over the application along with this instruction document, which operations team should follow. Okay, fine, operations team is going to follow those instructions in the document and they will do this set. Sometimes what happens, these instructions may not work, means they'll give some command to install this particular version of Java. That command may not be working on different Linux distributions because they have to do it on different servers, not only Linux, they have to do it on different operating systems, right? The document here may be working for Linux, may not be working on for Windows, right uh, or else these versions may not be working by the time they were doing these configurations or else they might not be understood the uh, language or the way these developers have written these instructions because like i said their core competencies are different so what operations team will do they have to follow this document but figure out the issue fix the issue all or, and then deploy the application all of this takes a lot of time a lot of time right also beyond that, okay, let's say they deployed it. They should work on high availability for the application, means the application should be always available for the end users, right? And there should be very less downtime, minimal downtime or no downtime, depending on the clients, right? Also, if something is broken, they should be able to fix it and bring the system back. Lot of challenges, lot of hurdles for operations team and definitely let's say application is ready uh, by December. It might be deployed and available for end users by May, right? Because of all these challenges and all, correct? These are the challenges you have in the traditional approach and deployment is becoming very slow, right? But now DevOps can help to increase the velocity of deployments. Deployments have become drastically faster the velocity of deployments have increased further. How is it possible, right? How deployments became faster because of automation. DevOps has brought a lot of automation, right? Means, okay, fine, deployment became faster, but how? How we'll be learning here, right, under this part? But let me give you a very little clue. Deployment became faster, one, for the reason because so many automation tools were adopted. Second thing is, the way of development, the way of deployment, the process changed. Means earlier developers used to handle the, uh, sorry, uh, they hand over the application along with the instruction document. But now the way they were handing over the application changed. 
they will hand over the application by dockerizing it or containerizing it containerizing is the best term so when they containerizing okay when they containerize the app and give it to app see don't worry what is containerizing we are having a separate chapter on it this is not the point to discuss this we have to learn docker from the basics to understand what is containerizing here i'm trying to just give you one more additional thing so that you may get more clarity the way of give sharing handing over the application change they are not just giving that java application as a var file and just the instruction document rather they were containerizing it and handing over to the ops when they do this way all these problems are sorted out they need not work on the compatibility setting up the servers manually okay they just run the container but forget about it just understand the way of development deployment completely changed with the docker which brought the revolution of uh, revolution and hence devops am i making sense right you got an idea how deployments became faster right but how exactly we will be doing all of that with hands on so are we good yes uh, sorry to interrupt uh, preeti can you just re repeat once again please which part you want me to repeat uh deployment faster like uh, the gap which fills this uh, devops okay see how deployments became faster is an additional point like i already mentioned it's not to discuss now but just i'm giving you one more uh, additional point like the way they were handing over the application changed means earlier let's say it's a java application they were sharing that var file that particular file which is ready to deploy or else a jar file but now they were not sharing that jar or var directly rather they were containerizing and sharing that docker image or a container so what is the use so that you they ops teams need not work on this compatibility setting up the server by checking java version tomcat version and so on no all of these are eliminated they can just deploy that image on the servers and deployment could be faster on the fly got it what is containerizing what is docker what is docker image all of that we'll discuss separately that's what i said just ignore this part just understand the way of development way of deployment changed and i have a question became faster yes please uh, ma'am uh, i'm just want to ask about the uh, are we uh, covering the kubernetes on the same yes we are covering kubernetes i'll also walk you through what are all the topics i'll be covering in few minutes i'm going to that show okay, you that okay okay thank you got it bikram and everyone any more questions uh, no no prithi got it right i'll also talk about cloud versus devops uh, veerashendra okay? okay uh remind me in few minutes yeah. all right so deployments became faster okay De De devops brought a revolution so that deployments faster that's what companies need right what does the organizations need they need applications to, should be to be deployed faster and because we were using tools like i told you they, this automation can happen with the tools right so the process is automated with a tool stack right because of these tools the process has become automated 24/7 without any manual inter intervention which is great for the companies right 24/7 applications are available application could be deployed drastically faster and it became very economical because it reduces on manpower obviously initially to build the pipeline okay i'll come to that part so these are all the advantages like what devops like why devops came in to eliminate the gap right also to make the deployments faster by use of the tools also there is one more reason to eliminate the drawbacks by the traditional software methodologies by the way what is a software methodology what is an sdlc okay. what is an sdlc Software, software development, development life, cycle. life cycle. Software development life cycle. And what is the software development life cycle? There are uh, there are various methods like waterfall, agile. Agile is of deploying the software. Uh... Right, right. So it eliminates the overcome the challenges posed by traditional methodologies like SDLC is nothing but software development life cycle. 
which has sequence of activities involved in a development means there were so many stages right like requirement gathering right right then requirement uh, analysis design coding right testing and de delivery or deployment and maintenance these are the different phases involved in development of an application right and also yes these phases goes one by one after the other yes i'm talking about waterfall methodology there were so many methodologies okay you need not learn go and learn those methodologies the idea is to just give you some understanding i'm talking about waterfall methodology this has got so many challenges so many uh drawbacks Okay, but this served the industry for more than decades, right? More than two decades or so. So yes, the, but still this model has got lot many challenges. Both the development team and op team have faced. What are those challenges, anyone? Uh, like uh, requirement came in. Uh... Yeah. See, first thing is it is the well main challenge is collaboration. Yes, collaboration. And also it's very slow. Like developers write some code today. It is not immediately going for testing. It would be tested maybe after six months. Meanwhile, developers will be working on other new code. Then testers test this old code come the, comes with the bugs with the new bugs in the old code. Then developers have to keep this new code aside, fix the bugs in the old code, which would be a lot of challenge, a lot of pressure on developers. Also become testing, also because testing is done at a later stage, it is very slow. Uh, correct, it's not economical. So it's a very slow process, not flexible means, let's suppose they are in coding stage. Develop, uh, let's say client came up with new requirements. That's not possible because it just goes in one direction. Going back, not possible. That's why it's called waterfall. But nowadays, each and every client comes with the modifications, new requirements. If you can't accommodate that, it doesn't work in reality, right? So not flexible enough, very slow. Also, complete software will be de all delivered at once. Meaning, let's suppose you got these requirements in 2024. January, you got the requirements. They'll be freezed. No more modifications, no more changes would be accepted and the same product with those requirements will be delivered on 2026, which the client never needed, isn't it? Because meanwhile, these two years, business might have changed. It's a customer-facing world. Uh, business might have completely changed. Requirements would be changed. If you can't accommodate new changes, requirements in between, it doesn't work anymore, right? These are some of the challenges faced by development team. Ops teams also face challenges like... Uh, uh, like because this may this methodology is slow they have to maintain server for longer duration maintaining servers for longer duration manually is also a challenge like they have to keep them up and running right poor configuration management configuration management is a separate concept which will be dealt with ansible puppet and so on here just understand configuration management means no control on the infrastructure means what is happening on which server at what time no detailed control, no detailed history. Also poor monitoring, right? You need a good monitoring on what is happening on which server, what is the uh, server capacity, what is the CPU usage. You should be knowing that end-to-end -end continuously, which is not possible because everything is manual, right? These are all the challenges you have and how to overcome these challenges by these traditional methodologies. That's where actually another methodology called Exile came in. But Exile was successful in overcoming these challenges of dev team. But challenges of ops team were still there. These challenges were still there. Means we need some other methodology, which is DevOps, which can overcome challenges posed by both the teams, development team and ops team. DevOps can overcome them, right? How we will see, but before, as we were talking about Agile, how Agile can overcome development challenges? Because it has got, okay, let me just give a brief on Agile. 
In SL, there will be continuous releases. Every week, every alternative week, there might be a release. Right? Every week or it's not that complete software is delivered all at once. Every alternative week or every week, there might be a release. Right? Also, testing is done immediately after coding so that uh, uh, like it is easy for developers to fix them. It is economical as well. Also, code is de developed in bits and parts. Right, because of all these, Exile could overcome the challenges of development team and Exile implements something called continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration. What does it mean? Again, I'm saying we are having a separate chapters on them. Like I said, today I'm giving you a high level picture. I'll give you an example also. Let's say on week one, developers are developing a chunk of code called Y. Okay. Next, on week two, this chunk of code A will be tested. And on week two, developers are not sitting idle. They will develop another chunk of code called B. On week three, again, this B will be tested. Okay, developers will be working on another chunk of code, another bit of code. And at some point, definitely, these should be combined and tested, right? Like, that, then only it makes a complete product. All of them will be combined and tested, which is called integration. And if you notice every week, testing is happening, development is happening. Also, new code will be merged into the system and tested, integrated into the existing system and tested, which is integration. That's why it's called continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration. Means development, testing, integration are happening parallelly, hand in hand. Right? They were happening parallelly, hand in hand. Right? That's what is continued. Every week this is happening. So whenever code is developed, immediately it would be going for testing. Also, client can come up with modifications which can be accommodated in the next week's sprint and so on. So that it could overcome that these challenges. But challenges of ops team were still there. That's why DevOps came in. Right? The DevOps eliminates all of these challenges. How? I will explain it. So understood these four reasons why DevOps came in. Are we good? Any questions? No, no, no Preeti. No questions are not clear. No clear, Preeti. Right, right. Thank you for confirming anyone having any question. You can let me know. So, and we will be getting this recording afterwards, right? Yes, you will be getting everyday class recording. Okay. This is a demo session recording I'm talking about. Everything. The demo is nothing but the first class. Yes, you will get it. Okay. Right. Okay. Deployments become faster and it eliminates the challenges of uh, overcomes the challenges posed by traditional methodologies and by the use of tools means everything is automated. Okay. Now, okay, fine. That's why DevOps came in. So what is DevOps? DevOps is nothing but continuous development, continuous testing, Continuous integration, sorry, continuous integration along with the continuous deployment and continuous monitoring. That is what is DevOps, right? What is meant by continuous development, right? Like I told you, developers keep on writing the code, testers test it, uh, and it would be integrated in the system, deploy to first to lower environments like staging environment, UAT environment, pre-prod, and then to prod to end users use it, and continuous monitoring. This is what is DevOps. The term continuous is important, right? These are happening parallelly, iteratively, continuously, right? Means, let's, let me tell you another example. Let's say developer wrote some code. From the desk of a developer, once developer is ready with the, his code, and testers are ready with their test cases, this should hit the production servers. This should go to the production table automatically. That is what is DevOps. And this process involved from the desk of a developer till it reaches the production table through automation is called CI-CD pipelines. Means continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. Right? So uh, now development team is there. Who write the code? Testers are also there. It doesn't mean the DevOps team will go and write the code or testers will go and write the code. Testing team is there. Who will write automation test cases? Who will develop these automation test cases? Then DevOps team is there. Okay, who will, once developer is ready with this code and testers are ready with the test cases, DevOps team 
will be or should be able to work on any stages in this pipeline to make the production hit the uh, make this application hit the production servers automatically this is what is devops so now who can learn devops who can become a devops person let's suppose you are a developer for 10 years now let's say you are interested or you want to work in this process of automation to see the application hitting the production servers you want to work in this process you learn DevOps and you can become a DevOps person. Let's suppose you are a tester for five years. Now you want to switch into DevOps. You come, you play this part. You work in this part. It means you will not write test case anymore if you are a DevOps person. Your background is testing. Now you will be working in this process of automation to take your application to production servers. Right? Similarly, let's suppose you are a DevOps person. Do you need to have, write the code? If you write the code, what developers will do? Developers are still there who will write the code, who will develop the application. Okay, DevOps person need not know programming languages or they need not write the code. You still have a development team who write the code. Once they write the code, once they're ready with the code and once the test cases are ready, right? You have to build the application, execute the test cases. Execute means just run the test cases in the pipeline and see that the application is deployed to different environments and reach the production table. Whoever knows this process of automation after development and after test case are ready, he can become a DevOps person. So this is what we'll be learning here. What is the process of automation? What are the CICD process? What are the strategies? What are the tools you should use? This is what is DevOps. This is what we'll be learning in this course. So let's say you're completely new. Perfect. You are completely new. You need. You know this process of automation. You know the strategies of CI/CD. You know the uh, best strategies or best tools that can be implemented. You can become a DevOps person. So anyone can become a DevOps person who can learn this process of automation by use of the right tools at the right time. So this is what is DevOps. Because many people will be having question, am I eligible to become a DevOps person? I'm coming from, yeah, I'm a DBA. Can I become a DevOps person? I'm a middleware person. Can I become, anyone can become a DevOps person who have knowledge on this process of automation, end-to-end -end pipelines. So in this course, yes, we will be doing the complete hands-on. We will build these pipelines from the scratch, okay, till the uh, deployment process. Complete CICD build will be built on two applications end-to-end -end throughout the course, two projects, so that you will get a clarity on how it works in reality. Right? And also, let me tell you, this process of automation initially means, let's suppose, okay, you might have joined the project. It's a fresh project. You have to create the CI/CD from the scratch. So yes, in the, from the, in the beginning, you might be needing five DevOps persons or whatever be the number. Number depends on the size of the project and so many things. Let's say a group of people, five people are there. Once it is built, once the pipeline is stable, later on, you just need two or three people. Means DevOps is having a lot of demand because this has to be, uh, these pipelines are to be built on every project and all. Once the pipeline is built, Okay, other DevOps people will be moved to manage the infrastructure and many other tasks. Working on the CI/CD part, few people are required. You, others might be working on Kubernetes clusters, preparing Kubernetes deployments, Terraform, and so on. So the strongest in the market with the tools, with the skill set will survive in the coming years. Because nowadays, almost all the company, all the companies are implementing, Zygatic companies are already implementing it, like Facebook, Netflix, and so on. Many companies are implementing it. Very few companies which are not are also striving, stepping into it. In a couple of years, by 2026, DevOps should be learned by everyone. Everyone should have an idea on it. I will give you another uh, thing also. See, let's suppose there is a developer. He has passion for development. He just still want to continue as developer only. He don't want to become DevOps person. Like I said, he has passion for development. He has more interest into development. Still, he has to learn this DevOps. Why? In the beginning, I told you, right, the way they were handing over the application changed. Earlier, they would just give the code. But now they were containerizing. Few minutes back we were discussing, right? They will containerize it and give it as a Docker container. 
So definitely developers should learn it. Even testers should learn it because their test cases would be executed on Dockerized or Containerized or Kubernetes clusters. Everyone should have knowledge on these things. Everyone should learn DevOps in a couple of years. So it's a right time to invest your time and effort to learn these tools. Market is very good for DevOps when you compare with any other tools or any other technologies in the market right now. Am I clear? Now any questions? Because there are a lot of questions around um, eligibility for learning DevOps uh, and so on. Any more queries here? Uh, no. Uh, how many how many projects we are going to cover after this? Two projects. Here projects means for a DevOps person, those are CICD pipelines. In this process of CICD pipeline, we'll be also developing Terraform project and Kubernetes uh, projects. So yes, two projects will be covered in the class okay if you are interested you can also get another project for you to do the hands-on apart from these two anyway you'll be doing on these two apart from this you'll be uh, you can also work on other project which can be shared okay. we'll be working on one microservice project and one monolithic application okay. any more queries uh, Preeti. Uh, hi uh, mahindra over the side Actually, I uh, just want to ask about that. We can we can we start this uh, course in earlier in the week weekday because we get uh, some little late on the reaching office. So that's why I'm asking about that. Uh, timing will be fixed like seven thirty to nine. I have another batch in the morning, so okay. the timing would be fixed. It would be seven thirty to nine. Even I work, uh, I need to go to the office. But yeah, that's the timing uh, we'll be doing. Some flexibility. Flexibilities in the sense every day fix the time because see okay, okay. keep on changing the time everyone have to we have to think of everyone actually actually it's a nine to reaching officer getting a too late so that's why I'm asking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah okay like no. actually it would be one hour to one hour fifteen one and a half hour session right one hour fifteen minutes last fifteen minutes will be queries on the previous day's topics or if you are stuck up in the hands on in the previous day so okay. you can calculate like one hour fifteen minutes and then the questionnaire. Questionnaire, you can, if you don't have a question, you can also listen the questionnaire on the recording. Okay, okay, okay. So that is another way you can plan. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Preeti. I'll take up your uh, question, Navira Shindra. Okay, I have noted your question. I'll talk about them in a couple of minutes. Tell me, please. Uh, yeah, Preeti, I have a query. See, I been to, you know, I have around uh, almost 10 years of experience in uh, uh, you know, infrastructure side, wherein uh, I do not have any experience, zero experience in a coding. And and like coding means I do not know. It's like, a, um, just say that a pressure. I do not even know anything in a coding. So uh, I think in this, we do I, I think I'll have to learn a Python or the uh, Terraform and the, um, you know, uh, the Jenkins, the scripting uh, tools are mandatory in this. See, like I first thing, I'll answer your question elaboratively. First thing, like I told you, there are a separate team of developers who develop the application, okay? Who work in this process can also go, cannot go and write the code, okay? It is a separate uh, thing. Developers will write the code. DevOps team will not write the code, okay? That's first thing. There is a separate team who write the code, who work for the application, who know the client requirements accordingly. They'll write the logic, they'll develop the application and so on. DevOps team have to work on this process. Okay, now coming to Jenkins file. Jenkins file, it's a Groovy scripting. It is derived from Groovy script. It's not exact Groovy. Okay, it's a, it's a format. Template is available. You can use the template format and modify accordingly. It's not like development, like how developers write the code. It's a pretty simple there were so many ways you can do this very easily. I'll show that. I'll talk about all those hacks and tips once we get into those topics. So that's one thing Jenkins file format is there, template is there, you can modify and write it. And so many hacks and tips, how anyone can do it. Who doesn't need, who don't know any programming. You don't need to know any programming. Okay, second so, thing, Terraform, let me finish. Terraform uh -huh. also, you have the, code official documentation is there where anyone will refer and write the code. It's not like how developers write the code. This is just the format template. You modify and use it. 
Same is the case with Kubernetes files. Above that, like I said, there were so many hacks and tips, like how anyone can do. That's the reason, right? Ops people, majority doesn't need uh, or don't may not have coding background, but everyone can work on it because that's how they were designed. Second thing, you don't need any programming background for these. Those are not programming or development like how developers do. They are just like a kind of scripting, the modifying the template. Second thing, Python required or not for DevOps person. Python is not mandatory for DevOps. Okay, certain DevOps projects might be using Python to automate certain things. Not that every project is using Python. Okay, so uh, if any project is using Python rigorously, maybe there might be a project where they use Python for rigorous automation, right? They will choose the people from development background. It's not for us. DevOps person it's a good to have some idea, but it's not mandatory because not that every project uses Python. I, I, I haven't worked on any DevOps project till now where Python is used. It depends. It's not that everyone uses Python. Every DevOps project uses Python. Don't create this kind of dependency. No, it's not true. Okay, certain projects at certain point of time, Python might be used. For that role, they will pick up people with a development background. Okay. Also, like you might be having a question, I'm seeing some job description DevOps saying that Python is mandatory, Python is required. Then it's not for you. It's not that every job description suits us, right? So just okay. concentrate on one thing. DevOps is so huge. Concentrate on one part and master it. Let's say you want to work on that kind of Python automation, learn Python. It's a separate course, separate subject at all. You learn coding, you, you want to, you are interested in coding, you want to automate the things with Python. You master those skills and go for the jobs where Python is there. Go for DevOps jobs where Python is You Search for them. So it depends on individual to individual. Not that every job suits for everyone. Every JD is not for each uh, and everyone, right? If you put your target, you focus on the thing, what you need. You want to become a DevOps person with Python, go and learn Python separately. Search for DevOps with Python, go there. Or else you want to learn, your main agenda is to learn, you become a DevOps person and you don't know coding, concentrate on this process, this automation. You have vast tools, tools which has great demand, focus on those areas. You go, you pick up those JDs. Clear? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, but I just want to know how important it is uh, to learn the coding in DevOps. How how much important do you say? Just now, like I answered, coding is mm. not required for DevOps person. You don't need to learn coding. Like I already mentioned, you don't do coding. How to write okay. Terraform files, how to create Kubernetes files, Jenkins files. This is not coding. Okay, this is scripting where you can use the format template and use it. So you don't need to learn or have any bit of coding knowledge. Like I'm telling from the beginning, anyone from different environments can work. Right? That's how DevOps okay. teams are built. How to do that? You might be having questions, but how? I don't know. Any. You don't need to know anything. How you will learn? We will help you with the way how you should do it. When I'm doing those, when I'm creating Terraform config files, Kubernetes manifest files, we never call them as Kubernetes coding or Terraform coding. It's a Kubernetes config file. It's a Terraform manifest file. How to prepare those, uh, we will learn. You don't need to have coding for it, coding knowledge. So, yeah. so, but the scripting is required. Scripting of Terraform script is required. That is through formatting and development. Again, scripting means people will say Python is scripting. So is Python needed? No. Okay. Scripting of Terraform scripts, Kubernetes manifest files, scripting, that way you will do scripting. Okay. Scripting in the sense you don't need to learn Python scripting and all. No, yeah, okay. You will also teach us like how do we go ahead and work on those. Oh, yes. I yes. have worked on a scripting side also. Scripting is not required. That's what I'm saying. <clears> Don't <throat> generalize it like scripting. Let's say I will teach you how to write Kubernetes manifest files, how to okay. write Terraform config files, how to prepare yeah. your Jenkins file for CACD. Those will be taught, which need not have any scripting knowledge or background. Okay, okay. You can also see some recordings of mine in the YouTube where I have uh, developed Kubernetes manifest files. You can also get an idea.
Okay. There were a few more questions in the uh, chat window. I'll take up those questions in a while. Okay, just give me a few seconds. Few minutes, I would say, just walking you through what we have discussed till now. We have gone through the agenda, like we were talking about a big picture of DevOps. Roles and responsibilities are the process, the CICD process. You should be able to work on any part of this pipeline. Right, this course will help you that you have to work on those pipelines, Terraform manifest files, Kubernetes, I mean, sorry, Kubernetes manifest files, Terraform config files, all of these would be the responsibilities of a DevOps engineer. We'll elaborate those things when we get into each topic in detail. Again, DevOps delivery pipeline, I'm talking about that CACD, right? And let's also have it, have a look at the DevOps tools. And this is what we were discussing in the beginning. Development and operations, I have included QA also in development. Waterfall methodology, drawbacks, exile, whatever I have discussed in this is in this PPT so that you can refer this after the class like a notes for your reference. What is DevOps? And you can see what of in exile, design, coding, then testing and deployment. Sorry, in waterfall. In Agile, design, coding, testing happening iteratively, right? See, coding is com com happening every week. And then Agile with continuous deployment is DevOps, where design, coding, testing, deployment is also happening continuously. Do you see that? So, right. And roles and responsibilities are you should be able to work on any part of the CICD. It might be fixing the broken pipelines. It might be working on Kubernetes manifest files. It might be creating the infrastructure with Terraform. These are all the roles and responsibilities, right? Uh, and how this happens, how roles and responsibilities are assigned in the sprint call. We will also discuss these things in the course, okay? Like you might be having a sprint wherein all these tasks would be assigned to each DevOps person. There'll be product owner and DevOps lead assigning the task to each individual, right? There'll be a stand-up call discussing on those tasks every day and so on. We will elaborate these things as we go by when we discuss the tasks, okay? And yeah, skills of a DevOps person. Like you should be having an idea of version control systems like Git, Build automation tool like Maven, continuous integration tool Jenkins, containerization tool Docker, infrastructure as a code tool Ansible and Terraform will be covered, container orchestrators, Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, monitoring with Prometheus and visualization with Grafana, and cloud computing, certain cloud computing services, which will help us to implement DevOps. This is a very brief course content. Like I said, under every category, like there were so many version control systems like Git, EFS, Pairforce, ClearCase, so many continuous integration tools like a Jenkins, right? Code Deploy uh, and so on. So many other GitLab, right? Travis CI, so many are there. Out of it, Jenkins is the winner, like very widely used in the market. So I'm covering the tools which are very widely used in the market so that you get more exposure to the projects. Also, let's say you use your Git. You might be using SVN. Some projects might be using something else. But if you master Git, you can work on any other tools in the category. Similarly, if you master Jenkins, you can work with any other tool in the category. So master one tool in the category. That's what even companies are looking for. When we sit in the interview panel, we see that people have the concepts, people have the knowledge or not. It's not that he should learn De Jenkins, he should learn... Uh, GitLab, he should learn Travis CI, no, right? That's what is uh, company is looking for. Similarly, AWS, cloud. Yeah, now I'll take up this question from a participant. What is the difference between cloud and DevOps? See, cloud is a platform, okay? Cloud is an online management system where you host your servers. Means uh, like now companies are not having their own data centers, their own infrastructure. They are having their infrastructure on cloud. Cloud is nothing but it's like someone else data center. AWS have got their own data center, their own servers. On them, we will be using some of the uh, servers we, which we are hosting, right? Like hosted data centers, right? That's a platform. So if you have an idea on AWS, you can work with GCP, Azure or anything else. Like I already mentioned, Companies are not looking for whether you know GCP, whether you know Azure or AWS, everything. If you know one cloud, they're expecting that you can work on any other cloud because 
they are not permanent every day a new tool is evolving particularly for devops same is the case with the cloud today it's aws it's azure tomorrow it might be something else companies are looking for your uh, flexibility agility or like your um, a way you can pick up the new tools and learn them if you know one cloud they're expecting you can work on anything else and that's how it is because the analogy the concepts would be similar hope i answered your question virashendra yep yep uh, is devops like a, is a base for anything any cloud or it is uh, on top of it? devops is a methodology it's a process Okay, it's not any tool or it's not a, a programming language or it's a methodology. It's a process which makes this automation happen by use of these tools. So DevOps is a process. It can be implemented on-premise or else it can be implemented on any cloud as well. Irrespective of the platform, the methodology, the tools remain same. So here, my course will help you implement DevOps on any platform. After taking up this course, you can implement DevOps on on-prem or any cloud. And as an example for cloud, I'm choosing AWS and certain AWS services. Of course, many AWS services which are helpful for DevOps are also covered. Got it? Got it. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, no, Priti. So, Priti, I have a question. Hmm. So as I was saying, this is a process where we will be in execution phase only, right? Execution phase only meaning what do you mean by that? Can you elaborate? Like, yeah. So somebody were asking where we are not required to have it. No, no, you confirm that we don't need any coding knowledge, right? We don't want to develop any code, right? Mm, correct. Yeah. So in that case, so we will be only just uh, uh, supervising the complete process, right? From uh, 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 code generation level to the development level. That's it, right? See, it, it is not the only thing because that is very huge. It's not just supervising. Once developer write the code, there is so much of process you have. To, you have to build the application. You will build it with some build automation tool. See, Maven, an example. So you'll be using build automation tool in the pipeline, build it. Okay, then it should be, test cases should be executed automatically. Once they are fine, it should go to the next phase. Like using Jenkins, all of this happens. You will containerize it and deploy it. And the infrastructure where you are running will be built with Terraform. So it's so huge and vast. Developers write the code. That's one part. After this, you have all this major part wherein you have to automate the entire process. Yeah. So here, like my question uh, comes here. This is the pipeline. Tell me. Yeah. So uh, it means like we need to be aware of development also. Like we need to know the um, uh, coding knowledge also, if I'm right. When developer wrote the code, why do you need a coding knowledge? Are you going and writing the code? Then where our task uh, relies uh, when it comes to development part? Like I want to clear my doubt in the very beginning, whether my choice is right but or not. Don't take me wrong. You come in this part. This is a team of developers. This is a team of developers who write the code, place the code in version control system like Git. Once it is done, you who will build this pipeline? DevOps person have to build this pipeline. How they will build this pipeline? By writing a Jenkins file. Right, there is a file called Jenkins file. You write the Jenkins file, which will, whenever developer make a comment, means whenever they write the code, this file means this pipeline will be built in such a way that automatically it can identify it, pull it, build it by using some tools. Then uh, some test case will be executed. Then deploy it using containerize it using Docker, deploying it on Kubernetes clusters. All this infrastructure can be created with Terraform and configured with Ansible. This is where you will be working on. Makes sense, right? Got it, got it. So over here, uh, Docker and Kubernetes, even they, uh, they are monitoring tools or what they are in the deployment phase? Obviously, that brought the complete revolution. Like I said, in the beginning, some time back, earlier they used to just give the code. So the ops teams have to struggle a lot to set their compatibility, set their versions and so on. But now they, Docker, they'll containerize it. Means application will be containerized using Docker, right? That's what which brought a complete revolution. So once you containerize it, it's very simple to deploy them and to manage their high availability, load balancing, auto scaling, all of them will be done on Kubernetes clusters. Obviously, those are all the modern DevOps tools. 
Kubernetes and Terraform has got a lot of, obviously you should know Docker, that's mandatory. Like I said, even though you want to continue as a developer, still you need to know these tools because you are going to containerize your application. Your developers, along with the source code, they will put the Docker file also. Means developers should also learn this Docker and all. It's not that DevOps team will go and write the code. Am I making sense? But still developers should know Docker as they create Docker file to Dockerize, to containerize their application. So mm -hmm. everyone should learn these tools. It's not that DevOps team should go and write the code, but the vice versa is true. Uh, could you mind to but, uh, but, make it clear uh, what is, uh, one second, my friend. So what is cont containerization? Can you make it simple, like generally? It is a huge topic. Okay, you need to know what is Docker. It's again a separate topic. Let me tell you one thing, like I told you already, containerizing means like earlier, you don't need to struggle upon the dependencies. Means, see, I'll give you a very simple note. Earlier, let's say Java application developers used to give this OVAR file to Ops team. But now, they will containerize it and give the Docker image to Ops teams. What is the difference? If they give var file, Ops team have to run this var file by installing Java write version, let's say Java 8, whatever, give it, instructed by developers. They should put the Tomcat server proper versions and so on. On every server, they have to do this. Image means var file along with the right versions. Okay, it's an application along with the right dependencies. They will uh, create this image. Image or container is nothing but application along with the dependencies, right version of dependencies. They'll share it to upstream. It's like a package. Now upstream rather than doing installing all these separately they'll just run the container anywhere it works seamlessly they need not install java tomcat separately because application is coming along with the dependencies it needs that's a, what is a container see that's a vast subject that's a just brief liner i can give making sense perfect perfect Priti. enough for now thank you thank you so that's that's how it, it it has made the things very simple they need not work on this underlying configurations compatibility issues no more many other advantages not only this many other advantages which we'll take up at a later point of time see i definitely understand i have a people here who are completely new to git also there are people who might be having no idea on Git, no idea on what is container. So I will take up everything step by step. This is just as an, for, as an answer for someone's question. But yeah, we will take up in a structured way. Don't get confused or what. Okay, and another question I would like to take, a question from Rajkumar. We need AWS certification or not? Not required. Certifications are not required. I would suggest to do the certifications when you have good understanding on the subject, when you gain expertise on the subject. Ideally, when you look on the certification pages, it very clearly tells you that certification should be done if you have the, the eligibility or the prerequisites, particularly for Kubernetes, three to four exp three to four years experience, then go for certification because you gain such an expertise, you already worked for three to four years on Kubernetes, go for certification. That makes more sense when you keep it in your resume. Otherwise, you just do it immediately. Okay, you bug up the questions or you just do practice. You take up certification, you put it in a resume. That is what the ex you are setting some expectations to the interviewer, right? The questions would be as such. If you are setting high expectations, you should be able to answer those. Otherwise, it would be a negative impact. But uh, it's not just blindly you put certification, it works. No, they would be definitely having setting high expectations for you. So what I would suggest is first learn the tool. At least if you don't have experience hands on, at least learn it in this course for two months, gain the expertise, understand them thoroughly. At least that would be a minimum step to go for certification. And certifications are not mandatory. By the end of the day, in the interview also, it's your subject. It's your expertise that talks rather than your certification, right? When you are giving cert keeping certification, you are setting high expectations. So you should meet those expectations. If you can plan accordingly, yes, you can. But certifications are not mandatory. It's all your subject that matters. And there is another question from Khan. Do we need to learn again Kubernetes elaboratively after CDCI pipeline built once when once completed? Uh, Indran, uh, here pipeline is built in integration with Kubernetes. Do you see here Kubernetes? 
So pipeline will be built in integration with Kubernetes also, meaning we will learn every tool perfectly, then come back and integrate it. It's not that just learn Git after learn Docker, just go in the flow, learn one by one, finish. No, you learn God, Git, come and integrate, start this pipeline. Then learn Jenkins thoroughly in and out completely from basics till advanced, integrate in the pipeline. Then same is the case with the Docker. Learn it thoroughly, integrate in the pipeline. Kubernetes, learn it thoroughly, <clears throat> integrate in the CICD pipeline. And in this course, <clears throat> we'll be building this pipeline end to end. Okay, so we will learn it and integrate it. After completing the course, we'll be eligible for DevOps job as a fresher or experienced person. See, uh, this course can help you claim experience up to four to five years also. Provided you do complete hands-on, you put you expertise the subject, whatever I'm teaching here. Not just listening will work. Hands-on is mandatory. That is what I would request from you. Hands-on is mandatory. Hope that answered many questions in the chat regarding how much experience you can put. And there is another question. Uh, what the, yes, uh, Preeti, I have a question. Mm. Tell me, please. Uh, uh, suppose we are using the uh, uh, configuration management tool is a Terraform. So why are we using in the Ansible? Because it's the same thing. See, uh, Ansible yeah. is a configuration management tool. Terraform is infrastructure provisioning tool. Because there were uh, certain things which which each tool does means there were some common things which each tool can do. So they were just put as a config rather than configuration management tool. We call them as infrastructure as code tool because you look at the infrastructure in the form of code. You look at the you manage the infrastructure in the form of code. So we call them as infra. Both are different. Okay. Ansible is for configuring the infrastructure. Terraform is provisioning for infrastructure. Meaning, let me tell you, Terraform you can create the infrastructure. Means you can create your servers you can create your uh, s3 buckets all of them on any cloud okay yeah, once yeah, the infrastructure is created you can use ansible to configure them like let's say okay a server is created ansible can install some packages start some services on those servers that's how they are used they are not both same they have their own um, uh, best part like they have their own uh, uh, strong strengths and weakness terraform is great in Creating the infrastructure, of course, you can modify the infrastructure, duplicate, replicate the infrastructure. Ansible is for configuring the infrastructure. So combination is used. It's not that only Terraform is used or Ansible is used for everything. A combination is the best way. Okay, uh, I just want to ask about that. Uh, which language we can use inside of the Terraform, the JSON and templates, uh, the YAML? Not JSON, not YAML, Terraform uses HCL, HashiCorp. Okay, HashiCorp, okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's like a, a, how to write those. Everything is a documented. You will refer them and use it. Okay. okay, see, before I go to that, I have one more thing to explain. As I have some queries, I came up here. So these are the tools covered. Also, we will be learning Linux basics. Linux is required for this. I'll be teaching Linux also from the basics. It's just an another environment like you use Windows. So we'll be going from the basics of this Linux as well as a part of the course. So you just come see, I want all the participants to come with an open mind. Uh, don't keep hesitations like I'm from so-and-so background. Can I learn it or not? I don't have programming skills. Can I keep all these questions aside for two months? Keep the dedication and the trust Stay motivated for two months. I need your time completely, your effort completely to reach your goal. I can help you reach your goal if you are uh, coming with an open mind, have, uh, ready to put your time and effort. That's all yeah. we are expecting yeah. from you. Yeah. Right? And this is the just uh, an overview uh, of the CICD pipeline. We'll be building this CICD pipeline on two applications. It takes some time. It's not that you develop this in one day or an overnight. It takes some time. It's a continuous process. Every day we'll be building bit by bit. Like you learn Git, you build this part. Okay. Like uh, here we'll be zooming into each section. Okay. Each section of this tool and we'll learn them. Okay. Then when you learn Jenkins, yes, come and build till this part. Okay. Then when you learn, know how to run test case, you, you build this part. Then you learn Docker, you come and build, uh, you come and build this part. Then you learn Kubernetes you add this stage to our pipeline. That's how step-by-step step we'll build this pipeline, zooming into each section, which takes a couple of months. 
okay as we go by things fall in place i definitely know particularly for devops there will be lot of questions lot of confusion so many misconceptions right so all of this will be cleared uh, by the end of this course priti ma'am mm -hmm. uh, what tool we are using for the continuous testing is a selenium and sonar cube see we will not write test cases again i am mentioning Yeah. testers will write the test cases it might be selenium or jmeter or uft whatever it is it is irrespective to us as a devops person what you need to know as a devops person is okay you are given some test cases how do you run them in the pipeline that's what we'll be learning here it could be anything i'll show you in a way that you can run any test cases here we'll be using some j unit test cases If we are using in the sense again you will not write j unit test cases okay already i have some code base where those test cases are there like in real time how testers will provide us will automate executing them in the pipeline clear and any more questions from anyone by the way i would like to uh, give you one thing here i'm starting a quiz see the actual agenda the overall big picture i have given you i'm giving you a quiz here okay which will have some basic queries and some of the questions are also out of topic the reason for giving you those questions are so that you can think and answer right i'm starting a quiz please answer those queries as well uh, have you all got it have you all got the quiz yes please go through them now if you still have any questions yes you can uh, unmute and ask Every day you will be having these kind of questions on the topic cover, so that it will help you to reiterate the things, so that it will help you revise and register the things. Every day you will have a quiz. You are done, Priti. हाय ब्रिज हेलो यस थैंक यू डिप्टी सन सेंड द टैग सी आई हैव ऑलरेडी शेयर्ड इट एंड इट इज रनिंग यू हैव टू ओपन दैट ऑन योर जूम विंडो देयर आर मोर ऑप्शन राइट थ्री हाइफेंस विल बी देयर इफ यू क्लिक दैट यू विल सी अ पोल्स और क्विजेस यू कैन क्लिक दैट एंड यू विल सी दैट पोल विंडो क्विज विंडो See, I am doing this on my mobile. Not able to see. See, I unfortunately submitted it once after clicking one hour. Okay, but I'll close it. Then you can access it. No problem. Just give me a few minutes. I'll once I close it, you can re-access it. See, you. There were multiple questions. You have to click on next and go through. Yes, ma'am. There were ten questions. Okay. so every day quiz will be shared with you and the lab setup i'll be helping you with the lab setup as well and also just give me a second you will be getting access to a google drive okay all of this access you will be getting uh, can you all see this drive 
So here you have all the folders, including today's presentation, lab setup, AWS, everything. Okay, this you will get access wherein you have all the hands-on uh, things really helpful for your hands-on. Everyday class recordings will be shared. You already got the class recording link on the chart window. Have you got the link? And this, and on our website, this is the LMS learning portal, which everyone will get access to. Okay, here is the LMS where you will see all the quiz, right? Interview questions, quiz portal. Every day you will take up the quiz after the class. That is to revision. That is helpful for revision, right? And also the lab assignments, interview questions, everything were there. Interview questions will be discussing in the class. Also, here you are having again set of interviews to quickly go through during your uh, interview. And also if you go for the assignments, right you are having the complete assignments here also scenario based questions one second see interview questions are topic well suppose if you go to first tool see beginner level intermediate level advanced level and scenario based questions all of them were available here so after each topic you have to take up the quiz daily go through these questions master each tool and integrate them in the CICD. That will be the ASNR. That's how we'll be going through. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow will be, it is our second class. Monday, the same time, we'll be starting with Git. First, we'll be learning what is Git, why Git, the architecture of Git, complete understanding on Git. Then we'll start our CICD pipeline. That will be how we'll be practicing. Fine. Yeah. I did not get your question, Veera Chandra. Practicing at our labs, what is needed? Oh, on your laptops, what is needed? Okay, you don't need to have anything on your laptop beforehand. Okay, you just need to have Git. We'll be installing it tomorrow in the class. You don't need to do anything before the class or you don't need only Git. Everything else, all other tools will be installing on AWS cloud instances so that you'll also get exposure to cloud. So you just need a laptop, nothing else. Prithi, you're talking about access once payment and all the formalities are done. How about the access? Like, is it restricted for a couple of months or? Uh... As, uh, access is for lifetime. Okay, there's Google Drive access, recording videos, our quiz portals, lifetime. You'll have access for lifetime. No limitations uh, in the period. Also, you enroll this batch today. Okay, uh, for some reasons, you could not continue the batch after 10 days or after 15 days. You can retake the batches, retake the sessions within an year, anytime, in the upcoming batches. Also, everyday class recordings will be shared. Okay, if you miss any class, you can go through the recording and get back with the queries. And you are having a WhatsApp group now, right? We'll be also creating a separate group of a separate WhatsApp group for registered students, means with enrolled students, a separate, dedicated, private WhatsApp group where you can post your queries during the hands-on because tomorrow onwards, hands-on begin. Suppose you are stuck up somewhere, you are uh, stuck with some questions, you can post those screenshots in the WhatsApp group where I can pitch in and help you or else other team members can answer and so on. So that you will get a help on your, uh, during your hands on. Hi, hi ma'am, I have two questions. Hmm. Please. Uh, one is regarding this project. Hmm. Uh, like, uh, I watch videos in YouTube. Hmm. So, uh, they, uh, they th taught me like, uh, they take one application made of HTML. And hmm. they used to... Uh, make it happen using Kubernetes. Only that HTML file, not like module, modular way, like user module. See, HTML code or code will be developed by developers. So so I'm not are, let me tell you. Let me answer. I got your question. So, developers will write the code. Okay, give you the code. You have to deploy it on Kubernetes cluster means as a DevOps person, is it your part to write those Kubernetes manifest files or the code? Uh, basically, hmm? I am not having idea, man. Today we discussed right from the beginning. Okay, anyone? So from today's topic, what did you understand? Okay, developers have written some code. As a DevOps oh. person, you have to deploy it on Kubernetes cluster. So my question is, as a DevOps person, should you develop those Kubernetes manifest files or the code also you will develop? 
What did you understand from today's class? We have to manage the manifest files. Not the code. Yeah. Code might no. be HTML code or PHP code or Java code or .NET code. It is irrespective to us. Right? So it might be HTML code, whatever. Our main agenda is you have to create the cluster. You have to make the deployments. You see that application is highly available. You have to auto scale the application. These are the topics we would be working on. Okay? So that is first thing. Next thing. Uh, in a one example, I might have used a Q or HTML file to containerize it, to, to show the basic containerizing. Okay, but it might be or in, in this course, we'll be covering two applications. Like I said, it would be a monolithic, one monolithic application, which is Java Maven app. Another one is microservice application with PHP and DB code. Means I should have the code base, right? I should have some code base, Java and Maven. I'm not a developer. So I have taken some Java source code or open source projects and we are building CI/CD pipelines for it. Similarly, I have taken some PHP code, right? Uh, with the front end as PHP, back end as a SQL. For that also, we were containerizing it and we were creating, deploying them on Kubernetes cluster and so on. So somewhere like uh, I might have taken some sample HTML page as an example to containerize it and go through the next steps. Got it? Okay. okay. My next question is like, uh, we, you know, Correct uh, karta, techi, current to. Please Hello? keep muted everyone. Please keep muted. Yes, Vijay, right. please go ahead. If you don't have a question, please keep muted. It avoids backgrounds. Yes, Vijay. I'm to, I'm who to contact about this, ma'am. Not, not discussed about shell scripting. If it's uh, uh, what we are going to do with shell scripting in sorting for, you please tell me. Shell scripting basics will be covered, okay? Also, a bit of shell scripting will be using in the pipelines that will be covered. Again, I'm telling, like I answered the question earlier, like Python is not mandatory for DevOps, shell script is not mandatory for DevOps. There were so many problems we face if we just rely on shell scripting. But in this course, I'll teach you shell scripting basics. I'll also use shell scripting in the pipeline. Then I'll also show you how you can do that without shell scripting. Got the point? Shell okay. scripting, using shell scripting for automation has got so many limitations, so many drawbacks. Whichever projects using shell scripting were migrating with, with the came in of new tools. We have so many tools which will replace those shell scripting. But like an example, I'm also going through basics of shell scripting, keeping in mind maybe in, if any project he has to use it as a basic scripting. So we'll be doing something, also we'll be using it pipeline. Then I'll also show you the best way by removing the uh, shell scripting also. Okay, like I told you for Python, same is the case. It's not mandatory that you should know shell scripting and every DevOps project uses shell scripting, no. Hello. Thank you. And someone is asking about the fee or anything else. You can connect with Mr. Raj. His number is there on this website. You can reach out to him for all other, any other queries you can reach out. Or also for career counseling, guiding, guidance, you can also reach on Mr. Raj. He's the best person for that uh, career counseling. Google Drive, WhatsApp link, everything will be shared. Once you are enrolled, everything will be shared. You can connect with uh, Raj for uh, all those details. Good. Ma'am, can you share the Mr. Raj's mobile number on the same? Are you seeing the screen? Here it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I will, I'll try to copy this and put it in the Zoom chat. Uh, again, uh, see, we you, you said you are going to uh, share the quiz. So how about the results? Whether we are, uh, we are, uh, we have made any correct, uh, like we did I any once I close it, you will get the results. Also, we can discuss upon those queries. One second, I'm closing it, ending it. Everyone have completed, right? Yeah. Let me close. Fees is not mentioned, no, ma'am. Fees is also mentioned in the... You can connect with Raj for all the fee details, everything. Any can you share the number, ma'am? Huh? Can you share the number? Yeah, I shared the number on the WhatsApp. Uh, sorry, on the Zoom chat. I have shared it on the Zoom chat. Okay. And the quiz, I, I'm not seeing the quiz. Just one second. I'll close it so that you get the results. And also, today's quiz is on the Zoom. Tomorrow onwards, quiz will be on the Google quiz. The advantage of Google quiz is you can retake again at your own pace. 
means let's suppose you are learning at your own uh, leisure time you want to take up the quiz that is possible these quizzes will be coming from google google quiz today's quizzes are zoom quiz as it is just the intro kind of but tomorrow onwards you will get a zoom quiz any more queries after completing this course is there any placement assistance from your side uh, see i'm just an individual working uh, uh, and teaching the classes out of my passion and interest uh, so a, a formal placement assistance will not be there one thing but you will get any references and all in my circle uh, if i came across any references and all we'll be posting them Okay, second thing is for DevOps, if you learn it properly, if you have good subject, you don't need any references, any assistance because there were so many jobs, postings in now, Cree, LinkedIn and so on. Okay, you get good, huge number of calls when you put them in your resume. It's you, how you handle it. It's your, uh, it's in your hand, how you handle them. Okay. So okay. quiz results were shared. Okay, you can also cross check. Any questions you can also discuss with me. Hope you got the correct answers as well. Can you also see the correct answers? Are you seeing yeah, the yeah. correct yes, answers? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yes. All right, all right, good. What is culture change? Uh... Is culture change in the sense like i said till now these teams were working as a separate teams developers they just do their work just handle the application their task is done okay they are working with proper without proper collaboration right but that changed here interaction is important every day developers will like you know, they will make a commit they will containerize it so they have more interaction with the devops teams devops team interact with developers they are communicating better they, this this approach made these teams work with the proper collaboration. Communicating with other teams is very important for DevOps. We'll be communicating with them, discussing on how they can better containerize their app, give some inputs or uh, share the inputs on how they were going to deploy it on cluster like this. Because they were working on the CACD, everyone will interact better. So the culture change. It's not a blame game anymore. They work like a single team with a proper collaboration proper proper understanding to build the pipelines effectively that's what is a cultural change it's not a, like i told you it's not a software it's not a tool or it's not a uh, programming language devops is a methodology it brought change in the culture how people are working okay and again that's why it's not something you achieve in an overnight some people say that okay devops we started implementing devops it's completed no it's an ever-ending process it's not there is no end you can make it better you can keep on making the process better you can make keep on making the pipelines better how we'll see in this course also because initially when you don't know docker we'll be using some shell scripting once you learn docker you remove this shell script and automate the things with uh, docker or ansible and so on so you keep on making it better as you improvise your skill set same is the case with the real projects as well so it's a continuous process of improvement, implementation, cultural change. That's how even we will build our pipelines. As we don't know Ansible, we'll install the tools with shell script. Once we know Ansible, we'll remove this shell script because you know the advantage and you really appreciate why Ansible is there. When Ansible is there, why do you need this kind of shell scripting which has got its own disadvantages? We will discuss on all of that. So it's a continuous process. So, yeah, that is all from my end. Uh, I think I have given... Uh, one more question, ma'am. Yes, I'll stay there. I'll be there. Just giving you a yeah. conclusion. This is the high-level picture of DevOps. Okay, from tomorrow onwards, we'll get into actual topics, starting with the Git. All right? Any questions, anything else, I will be there uh, for a few more minutes. You can ask me. Yes, Akshay, please tell me. Yeah, as you mentioned... Uh... We can put up to four to five years of experience as after completing the course, mm. right? Yes. In our resume, yeah. Okay, that's it. 
any more questions, you can call us. You can call Mr. Raj you, or you can also reach out to me for any other queries. And yeah. All right. Okay. Then. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thanks for your valuable time. Thanks for joining on your weekend, spending your time here. Thank you so much. And have a good Sunday. Which of these is an essential change that dev and ops must make to achieve success with the DevOps? Stop working in silos and work together. That's what they should do, right? Hire ops engineers to automate, use the right software tools or deploy monolithic applications rapidly and continuously. Rather than all of this, the correct parties you should stop working in silos. Means uh, working in silos means, like I said, it's not that developer just write his code and go away. He should containerize it. He should discuss with ops team on how this application is going forward, right? All of these uh, should be also discussed well to make the pipelines robust, reliable. Uh, okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. All right, then. Uh -huh. Can we get a recording of this session? Yes, already recording link is placed in the Zoom chat. Can you okay. see that? In the Zoom chat, you have the uh, demo recording link shared. No, okay. ma'am. Actually, I joined late, so I'm unable to see the message. Okay. Uh, one second. No worries. I'll put it again, okay? Siti. Yes. Uh, Priti, see, I just have one query because mm. I recently, uh, you know, I have completed one uh, uh, project as an infrastructure code for the automation of the complete uh, AWS uh, infrastructure side. So in that, our uh, you know, a uh, DevOps engineer who was also writing the code. I think in the, the he was using the JSON and the Jenkins writing the code, and at the same time while deploying the CI/CD pipeline and integration, and complete it. So he was doing all that in extensive, uh, you know, coding, uh, and he was finding it. You know, he was getting stuck in few places where this guy, you know, the uh, code or the script is giving a lot of errors, then we have to bring in another DevOps engineer to fix that. Uh, so I just want to know, was it a developer uh, state and was it the uh, DevOps engineer? Uh, see, this person, you told he's writing JSON, YAML, and all those are Kubernetes manifest files and Jenkins files, right? Hmm. So that's not coding. That doesn't come under coding. Like I already mentioned some time back, we write Jenkins mm -hmm. files. We write Kubernetes files. That's not mm -hmm. coding. Okay, mm -hmm. Jenkins is a pipeline DOM DSL. Like it's a separate script where you have the mm -hmm. format and template which a DevOps person should write. I like what I understood from your cases. Yes, there are certain projects when there is no DevOps person, uh, the same developer might be doing these things, right? But they will be into coding. <laughs> kind of CA mm -hmm. pipeline creation and all. So uh, uh, an expertise DevOps person is required who work on this Jenkins files, Kubernetes manifest files and so on. So that's a separate uh, subject, right? That there should be a separate learning. It's not that a developer, because he know coding, he can write Jenkins file. There is, that's a separate subject or study you have to do. So even though he has development knowledge, he might not be well versed with how Jenkins file and Kubernetes manifest files work. It's not coding. It's a completely yeah. different subject. So that's why they need a separate DevOps person. Okay. Because I was the project manager there, so they were working on this project. So I just... Yeah, because see, like in Kubernetes, part. Kubernetes manifest file will have different parameters. <laughs> right? Let me just show you. Because while they were doing, I was also on the call, but I was understanding it zero. Actually, I was, I was not getting anything what they were doing. Yeah. See, this is Kubernetes manifest files, right? If anyone having the same question, you can also say, uh, see this. See, here is the deployment manifest file. Okay. 
this is not coding and it's not that because developers don't coding they cannot write this oh. okay such the documentation for deployment hmm. see this is the manifest file yeah. this is not coding you can just copy okay. it and use it you can change the deployment name, these names accordingly. That's what I was talking from the beginning. If any of our oh. folks are still there, they can understand. This is Kubernetes manifest file. Do, do you mm. think this needs coding? This is nowhere coding. Okay, but what you should know is what is meant by metadata here? What is meant by specification? What is a template? Which label I should give here? What this whole thing does for Kubernetes? That's what you should know. People are under the notion that they see this file and think that this is coding because I know coding, I can do this. No, it's a separate oh. subject. It's not coding. No. You can copy Maybe. this file and use it, but you should know each parameter here. You don't need to write line by line. This format is already available in official documentation. Kubernetes mm. is an open book exam, even in an interview or else is in the certification. Means you can always refer this documentation. That's what we, anyone will do. But understanding these parameters, making the change accordingly, that's what a DevOps should focus on, not writing this line by line, because we never so do maybe, it. Maybe I do not even have a, even a scripting knowledge. So that's why I was like, I thought it was it's like uh, coding they were doing. Hmm. They were doing all yeah. that JSON. See, again, I'm saying this is not coding. This is yeah. not scripting also. I would call them as, I would prefer to put them as Kubernetes manifest file. That's all. Kubernetes okay. manifest file, it will have so many parameters, so many uh, attributes which you can set to deploy your application properly. Okay, this no, doesn't... They were, also, they were also getting it, you know, getting the template or something from the uh, Git also. Hmm. They will get from here and put it in Git. We will place all these files in Git only. We will first oh. accept them, see that they are working, then push these to Git. That's why people think that, okay, Kubernetes coding is there, they're pushing to Git. But these are the manifest files we push. We don't call them as a code because you get everything from here. It's not that you are using your logic and writing it. Like a developer's code. That's not, that is different. Okay. Man, uh, and then, how much, the... uh, just one minute. Uh, how much time do I have to cater to you know, within this two months and you know, per, per daily basis to completely master them this? It depends and varies from individual to individual. On an mm -hmm. average, I would say... What is an ideal? Hmm, on an average, uh, ideally, you can uh, spend one to one and a half hour after the class. That would be great. Okay? Like after the class, you watch the recording, you do whatever we have done in the class, you make your own notes, even though whatever is we are providing... You have your own running notes, means your understanding. You prepare it. That's how consistency is important. You have to do it regularly till the end. You can achieve your target. There are many people who have multiple offers in hand in my uh, projects in my previous batches as well. So only thing is consistency, effort. It's not coding. Okay, don't think I don't have scripting knowledge. I don't have coding knowledge. How do I do that? This is the answer. You are not going to generate this file line by line. You have already understand it, understand it to the core. See how it can be helpful for you in the cluster, where modifications can happen, where mistakes can happen. This kind of understanding you should have. You have everything here. Okay. And this is how we do. You just get this one, put it in your uh, project, make modifications, push to GitHub, maintain your manifest files as a source code as well. But that doesn't mean that you should be a developer to write the logic. Okay, okay. Anyway, I'll also help you how you can further make these things simple for you. Okay. So just, I need people with open mind who are ready to put their time and effort. Okay, sure. Okay. All right then. Okay. I have then, a day. I have a question. Uh, what is the most important role of the annotation in the YAML file? Please tell. Most? Important role of annotation in every YAML file. Every YAML file will not have annotation. Annotations are not mandatory. Do you see any annotation here? Uh, Do you see any annotation here? No. 
So annotations are not mandatory. Where you have to put the annotation, it's a different part. I cannot just generalize saying that you use annotation here, you don't use annotation here. First of all, what is annotation? What is annotation? So yeah, let's keep the things on pace on the right process. We'll take up one by one as okay. we go. All right, then. Thank you all. Have a good day. See you all tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.